I enjoy very much flying small drones and I don't know why but 1S drones, the, the smallest one possible, they have like a special place in my heart. So when I learned that Sub 250 created this, the Whoop Fly 16 drone 1S, I just wanted to check it out and see what it was about. Sub 250 actually contacted me some time ago to see if we could do business if I wanted to sell their drones in my shop. But at that time, they were offering only analog drones. And I told them that I thought the world, the FPV world was changing. Um, analog was on the way out. Digital is everything. And now that we have DJI HD0 and Vox now, it didn't make a lot of sense to sell analog and especially small drones. Wok Snail and HT Zero with the One S VTX has made a big difference when it comes to these small drones. And uh, when this one came out with the Wok Snail, I, I, I wanted to try it. Wok Snail is what I've been using lately. The most, I think, is a very good system. And I can fly my big drones and my small drones with the same setup, and that uh, that's perfect for me. So today I want to talk about this drone Wok Snell version and give you my opinion of what I think about it. The Whoop Fly 16 is a 75 millimeter small 1S drone. It's weighing around 43 grams and when you think about these characteristics I can not compare it to my happy model Mob Light 7 which is also 75 millimeter 1S, but it only weighs 33 and a half grams. So let's say that's just already starting. This drone, it's a little bit more heavier than most of the things that you're gonna find around there. And I think the reason why is because the same reason Sub 250, it's very proud of this drone. It's the canopy. If you look at the canopy of this drone, it's very sturdy, it's made from a very hard plastic and it actually, I have crashed it quite many times and it doesn't look like it suffers at all. The drone is, has this canopy or this hard plastic covering everything. So when I see these kind of things, I'm thinking like a beginner will be very happy with these kind of drones because you can go and bash it around your house or outside and most probably it's going to last quite a lot but that also adds weight to the drone and when it comes to how this drone is flying I have to say that it's not a very agile drone it's not something that you're gonna take and do a lot of freestyle move and these kind of things but at the same time I don't think Sub 250 was thinking about that kind of drones right i i really see this as a as i'm saying as a beginner drone like if you look at their website today uh, we are in summer 2023 you're gonna see that they actually created a startup setup with the analog version of this drone plus some analog goggles and a very simple radio express LRS radio and that's the kind of thing that i'm thinking this company uh, it's looking for when creating this drone. The drone has an all-in-one uh, card which has Express LRS integrated which is great and also they offer a crossfire version. This is for me it's interesting and, and I want to mention it because not a lot of small drones comes with the crossfire uh, option. The Crossfire card, even if it's very, very small, it's one or two grams that you're going to be adding to this kind of drones where every gram counts. So when, whenever you have one of these and you add a Crossfire a card, plus the Crossfire antenna normally is either the, the, the Immortal T is pretty big and if you're not using that, you have to use the cable one and you have to figure out how to put it. So Crossfire is not, it's that common in these kind of small drones but I really like the the the, the fact that sub 250 is offering express LRS and crossfire which are the main 
flying protocols or radio protocols that we have these days on FPV. Going back to how this flies, um, I was saying there is not a lot of agility, but again, it's this kind of drone that you want to fly around your house and, and start learning how to to avoid things and get into smaller gaps. It's, it's flying very stable. It's not super fast, it's not super agile, but still it's that kind of drone that you want to have in the beginning when you want to learn uh, controlling these kind of things. Now I'm going to the part that I don't like that much. Um, unfortunately, the drone is kind of overheating. As you can see right now, I'm flying inside the house. It's a regular day, nothing really hot or anything. And the temperature is just climbing up. Um, I thought that I could take down the temperature by flying outside. So I tried to go out and do some speed here, as you can see, but the temperature keeps going up. And this is not happening only to the core, to the all-in-one car. This is also happening to the VTX. And I tried to see if I could do something to fix this. I changed a lot of parameters. I went to the lowest power possible, 25 milliwatts, um, and nothing changed that. I contacted the company and their answer was actually to remove the warning. I mean, the warning is there because of something, right? It's telling you that something wrong is happening. Uh, it could be that it's not like you're gonna burn the, the VTX directly because they have like a range where they can work. But for me, the fact that the warning is there, it's just telling me that if I keep flying this way for a long time, for many days and so on, that VTX is gonna suffer and it's going to die sooner than it's supposed to die. So I'm not sure that I like that much the answer from sub 250. Um, they even told me that they were thinking to remove the warning when they ship the drones. And I don't think that's the real solution for this problem. I went to the internet to check if someone else was having the same issue, but no, I didn't find a lot of people saying anything like this. Um, it could be that my specific drone has a problem, but I actually think that the explanation is more that not a lot of people is getting the Voxnell version of this uh, drone. Most of the people that I that have reviewed this on YouTube, they are using either the analog or the HD zero version. And, and again, because of the size and the idea of having this uh, cheap startups or startup kit, a lot of people is getting this on analog, not Voxnail. And I think the Voxnail version has a problem I could, I mean, if you think about it from, from a logic point of view, this canopy, it's very sturdy, it's very cool, but it's enclosing everything inside very hard. The only way that it has for airflow is coming from underneath. And even underneath, you're gonna have the battery here. So once you have the battery, you have only these little holes here on the top for air to come in. And for the Voxel VTX, I, I think that that's not enough. In general, I think I have to applaud SOP250 because they're making a very big effort to get into the, the FPV business. They are not huge, they are kind of a newcomer. And they are listening to what people are saying. They are going towards digital, which is excellent. They're trying to adapt that technology into the small drones, which it's also very good that they have a niche. They are focusing on something and trying to make it to work and to make something good. But I will have to say that this drone on Voxnell version, it's nothing that I would uh, be recommending. And since I'm not bringing HD Zero to the shop and I'm not selling analog anymore, I'm not going to be bringing this drone to the shop but I'm gonna keep a very close eye to SOP250 because I think they are doing the right thing and I think they will come with a product that is going to be interesting in the, in the near future. And I'm looking to increase the, the, the offer of small drones that I have in the shop. So I'm always interested in these kind of things and I, 
I think they are going to, to do something in the future that I'm gonna like. So, sorry, not this time for this drone for me, but I'm pretty sure that something good is gonna happen. That's all that I have for you today. Thank you for watching and see you soon.